Tonight we're going to take apart the line energy UT1300 and 1200 and figure out what the difference is and we're going to clear up the confusion about the terminal. I criticized it and some of my viewers thought that I was talking about the current carrying capacity and that's not what I was talking about at all. I was talking about the entire terminal. So in this video I'm going to explain and demonstrate exactly what I meant. First of all we have four 8 gauge tin copper wires they go out to the terminal lug on each one. But on the new improved model, they added a protective cover. Because on the older model, if you were to over tighten this and these wires were to spin, they would short out on these battery terminals and I think they had some warranty issues for that. But on the new one, they upgraded it by covering this up and by protecting these wires. So maybe there was an issue with these wires because these ones have no protection at all. The next difference I noticed is on the old one, there is no plastic right here on the case. But on the new one, there is plastic right here. And this prevents the terminal, if it were to get loose, from spinning and hitting one of these bus bars. But besides that, everything else is the same. It's the same type of wire, the same bus bars, everything else is identical. So it's nice that they made these upgrades, but I still dislike this terminal configuration. I mean, think about how many upgrades they had to add just because this can loosen. And they do have a lock nut and it does feel secure right now, but they did have problems in the past. And personally, considering how cheap this case feels in my opinion, um, I do not feel that confident when I tighten these things down. People thought that I was talking about the current capacity and they thought that because of the size of the bolt, that would determine it through the surface area. That's not what I was referring to at all. And I specifically stated in that video, four aught gauge wire connected, especially when the batteries are in parallel. And it's somewhat hard to tell, but look at how much plastic is holding this terminal into place. That's what I dislike. When you have large wires that are vibrating in a vehicle and you have them attached to this cheap case and it's vibrating like crazy with a small six millimeter screw, that just doesn't make me that happy. Also, when you tighten these down and you're used to tightening other batteries, these feel weak and scary. So that's what I meant. These can handle the current, but when you put four of these into parallel with a 12 volt battery, and you're not using a bus bar and you just put them together with large thick cables to run a large inverter and for four batteries that's going to be 600 amps. That just doesn't feel good when you have this tiny little screw. Here are some Kelb cells and the screw is huge compared to this one and it has nothing to do with the surface area and this is not responsible for current carrying. A very small amount of current will go through this. What carries the current is the actual terminal itself and this can handle it. But like I said, there's not that much material and it feels sketchy when you torque these. This is attached deep into the cell to the structure of the lithium iron phosphate lattice. So for this one, you could tighten this down pretty good to the spec on the data sheet, but it feels much stronger. We actually have people on our forum with the new aluminum cased cells with the small screws and people stripped them out. So this is actually a problem. Also, my lithium titanate cells have the same problem. Also, when you stack multiple lugs on here, if you have an inverter and you're paralleling at one single point, so you have to have three lugs, and by ABYC standards, you can have three lugs on bus bars and batteries, um, I wouldn't trust this. Look how much thread you have available. You can fit two lugs on here, but a third, absolutely not. So there's just less leeway. If you look at the Battleborn terminal or batteries that I personally like, specifically the Fortune lithium iron phosphate cells, you have tons of threads and it's thick. It's huge. It's three eighths an inch huge on the Fortune cells. That's why you can push so much current and you can attach huge cables with vibration. Those Fortune cells are made for underground mining equipment in subways. So they are made to handle vibrations. This, I don't think so, absolutely not. So that's the point I was trying to make. I'm sorry that it took so long and so many examples, but that's what I was trying to say in the last video. I would not trust this terminal for large amp loads with high vibration for mobile systems. Not at all, no way. Also, what I said about the Battleborn being a sealed system, that thing is glued and epoxy tight shut. This thing can be opened up with screws and there is no seal around the top moisture can get in. 
So I think a lot of my points were pretty valid and well thought out and I've installed these multiple times on multiple systems for over a year and I've installed all of these other batteries. So this is from experience. I've tightened these terminals a lot. Look at how scratched up they are. I mean, on both of them, I've used these batteries quite a bit and I just don't like the terminal. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. There's more videos to come. This is for my Frankenstein shed. I already built it and we have 11 kilowatt hours. So I'm gonna add more batteries to it and it's gonna be awesome. And I try to bash on all products, okay? I want you guys to know exactly how I think and feel about everything. I never leave anything out. So yeah, let me know if I missed anything in the comment section below and I will talk to you soon. Bye.